In this video, I am going to be talking about the drawing process that went into designing a attic remodel. And I will be using the latest Procreate 5.2, which is supposed to be a huge upgrade over the previous version, but I haven't really seen any difference in my own workflow at least. I think this is gonna be a slightly longer video as I will be sharing some of my thought process as I'm drawing. If you are new to this channel, my name is Henry and I share drawing and design tips to help architects and interior designers with a digital workflow. So the purpose of this visual is to show the client three different matching options that are slightly different from one another. And as part of our presentation, we also have floor plans and inspirational images to accompany these visuals. So in my layers palette, you can see there are three options. And so this first option is actually the one that has the least amount of built out. And the idea here is to keep it as open as possible where you can see from one end to the next. So option number two is just slightly different where we uh, enclose part of the floor space so that it's actually a walk-in closet. And this is really easy to do in Procreate. Essentially, I just created new layers and drew on top of the first option and made that as a group. So when you're exporting, you just have both of these options turned on and save that as a new JPEG. So option number three is a little bit more different. So essentially what I did was to make a copy of the first option and I revised the lines and the design as necessary. Um, and grouped it into a different option. What's really great about this is a lot of the lines and layers were kept the same, so you don't have to start the drawing from scratch. You also see on top of my layer palette, I have this layer called paper texture, and I really love to have this in here because it adds a kind of a paper texture to the drawing, whereas without it, it looks really flat. And I usually like to put this at the end of my drawing, and I'll show you how to do this um, in the demo. Also at the bottom of the layer palette, I also have a layer called SketchUp Shadow. And this is really a, just a simple shadow layer exported from SketchUp. And I like to have this in here because it quickly gives it some sort of uh, depth. And I think almost anyone can export something like this from SketchUp, Revit, or Rhino. So it's kind of a simple hack to give it a little bit more dimension. So for the purpose of this presentation, I'm gonna be redrawing option number three and just show you what goes into all these layers. And I did this in about 60 minutes and it might take you longer than that, but I think it's gonna be a lot faster to, to do this than to build a accurate and uh, nice SketchUp model that might not have the same kind of uh, appeal in the character of uh, hand drawing as well. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is to turn on the drawing guide under canvas and then go into the edit drawing guide menu. This is going to give me the perspective guides that I need to freehand in perspective later. I'm going to change the color to something that's a little easier to identify by moving the slider on top. And since I've done this before, I know the horizon line and the conversion point in the perspective is going to be somewhere around here. But if this is your first time, it's probably going to take you a little time to nail in the exact placement so that the perspective lines from your model is going to match the perspective lines in this drawing guide menu. Keep in mind that it doesn't have to be exactly perfect either. As long as it's close enough, then it should be fine to move forward. Before clicking done, I want you to make sure you toggle on the drawing assist box so this feature is actually enabled while you are drawing. If you don't want to see the perspective guides in the drawing, you should turn off the drawing guide under canvas so it's invisible. In my own workflow, I have a shortcut designating the little square between the brush size and the brush opacity to turn on and off the assisted drawing feature. So it's really fast for me to switch between drawing in freehand and drawing straight lines. You'll see this frequently in the rest of the tutorial. Sometimes your 3D model isn't going to be dead on and you might have a different idea once you actually start drawing on screen. In this case, the left side of the skylight was modeled too small and I wanted to make additional changes to the design than what was initially modeled on the computer. This is a lot faster to do on paper than to remodel on the computer to reflect another idea. And this is just the incredible benefit with drawing. 
So I did all this with a wet pencil on a new layer to rebuild the perspective in this section of the space. When I'm confident with the changes, then I'm going to air quote ink on top with my black pen. When starting a drawing, I typically like to build a box around where my drawing is. And this is really just sort of a stylistic choice. And I will do this with a straight line in this case. In other drawings, I might do it with freehand. I'm going to start building the bones in the drawing and this is essentially tracing over the bigger kind of massing lines first. You can see I can quickly do this if I have the drawing assist feature turned on to block out some of these more prominent perspective lines in the view. There are moments when I need to connect a straight line to another point on the canvas that's not part of this drawing perspective. So what you can do here is to temporarily turn off the drawing assist and use the hold and lift technique to draw a straight line from point A to point B. At this point, don't include any details, even if it feels tempting to do so. Trust me, having a organized layer structure is going to navigate, edit, and find information much easier later on. If for some reason you end up drawing on the wrong layer at some point, don't sweat it either. There are tools to help you move information from one layer to the next and merge things together. This is actually a feature that Morfolio Trace doesn't have at the moment, but I hope they can add something like this later on as well. When you feel like you have sufficient basic information in here, you can stop and give this layer a name and I called it the foundation layer and I will be adding new things to this layer uh, onwards. The next layer I've created is the glass frame and the door in front of the foreground. The reason why this was created on a separate layer is if I wanted to turn it off and everything associated with it, uh, I can, let's say, to make it into a different design option, for example. This is a technique I use in all my illustrations. The idea is you want to make it as flexible for yourself or for your clients to make changes to the drawing without erasing any more than you need to. Always remember to work smart and not hard. And name your layer appropriately too. Similarly, the next thing I'm going to draw in a separate layer is the built-in display or the bookshelf behind the bed. Again, the assisted drawing feature with a perspective guide is very useful here as it allows me to draw each shelf very quickly. Here, the idea of the integrated casework is more important than how it looks exactly. So keep that in mind. And it's meant to be suggestive, but not a final design by any means. What works really well is to pair this with a inspirational image in the presentation to anchor the idea even further with a client. I'm just gonna add some details to suggest some books and decor items taking place to make it a little bit more living. I find everyday items humanize the space, but too much, you risk cluttering the drawing. I think it does take a good eye to make it a balanced composition. So just try your best. And if you went overboard, the beauty of a digital workflow is just to erase it. The next thing I'm gonna draw is the bed. This is actually going to be all freehand because it's going to be faster and look better. The bed was downloaded from SketchUp Warehouse, so it's actually the right size. And to draw this, I'm just gonna give it a little bit more detail to make it more organic and fluffy looking. I'm going to turn off the built-in casework behind the bed so I can actually see it better and erase the part that's overlapping later on. I'm also just going to include a couple of shelves in the background with some decors on it as I feel like I don't really need to create a new layer for them. When this is done, I'm going to create another layer and this layer is going to be used for textures and materials which will include things like flooring, tile, wood, and stuff like that. In this case, I wanted to show the wood flooring running in the direction of the view. Having the drawing assistant turned on will help me draw all the planks in perspective. So I started with some larger width and added additional lines in between to make it look more believable. As for the walls, I'm not really sure what they're going to be yet. It could just be a flat painted wall or a textured plaster. For the sake of the presentation, I sprinkled it with some dots just to give it a sense of texture. The great thing about working on iPad is you can quickly go back and forth and hop between different layers when you feel like maybe you missed something on a particular layer. 
So here I'm adding additional line work on my base layer because I missed something earlier on. The last drawing layer I'm going to create is for any other details that will add to the composition. This will of course vary depending on your scene, but for this case, it's the trim around the opening, the chair and the table in the foreground and the diagonal glazing texture. And lastly, I am going to add some text, which is entirely optional. I find that it gives another nice touch, but occasionally I'll turn it off not to distract a nice render, but whatever you decide, just make sure it's on a separate layer. Now the drawing is mostly finished and it's time to adding some last minute touch-ups. This would generally start with erasing any overlapping line works in different layers. So if you had a organized layer structure, you would know exactly where to find and erase that part of the drawing. But if you had created too many layers and did not name them diligently, then it's going to take you a little longer to find the right layer that has the line work you want to remove. Moreover, I'm just going to take a quick minute to group all my line works into a folder so I can minimize it if I want to. This is especially more helpful if you have colors in the drawing, which you also want to make it into a group for the sake of organization. Almost at the end, but we're not done yet. Now I'm going to find my SketchUp Shadow Export and turn that on, but it's not lining up with our drawing perfectly because I revised the drawing in a couple of areas at the start. And this is an easy fix. What I do is to sample either the lighter or the darker part of this layer and manually paint over the areas where there is a obvious problem. I did this for the rich skylight, a couple of minor areas in the drawing and also deleted areas outside of the frame as well. And finally, when the drawing is all done, I'm going to add in my special paper texture. To do this, I'm going to insert the file from iCloud on the iPad where I have previously saved the paper texture. When it's in the canvas, make it just a little bit bigger so I can actually see the texture more clearly and change the blending mode from normal to overlay. The original paper file has a beigey tone to it, so I'm going to desaturate it first to make it monochromatic. And then I'm going to my curve adjustment and take the curve downward just a little bit so there's more contrast to the paper texture. And finally, and I swear this is the last finally I'm going to say, feel free to make any last minute tweaks as much or as little as you want. This could be erasing or adding additional line works to make your drawing just 1% better. And in this case, I've added plants, a person, birds outside at the skylights, light fixture, and additional decor. So if you found this tutorial helpful, please do let me know as I can try to replicate this kind of uh, teaching format in the future. If not, I can just go back to some of the shorter format that I had before. So before you go, make sure you check out some of my Procreate resource below. This includes templates for plants, study files, brushes, and others. And they're really designed for architects and interior designers who are looking to transition into a digital workflow. So this tutorial was also done without much music as one of my subscriber pointed out that he found the background music to be kind of distracting. So let me know if that's something that you like or don't like in the comments below. As always, feel free to connect with me on social media if you have a question or a topic that you want me to cover or just drop me some nice words on Instagram as well. That probably works too. If you can hit that like button before you go, I appreciate that too. See you next time.